Okay, perfect, perfect. So we still have some agents trickling in on, on our end as well, but uh, we can certainly go ahead and get started. Um, now we've got, um, I know I've got a couple of the sponsors, um, you know, listed on there. Oh, thanks. Um, so I, we'll start here um, at the Naperville Market Center. Again, thanks everyone for showing up and for everybody also on Zoom. Um, I, Smart Plans is one of my favorite parts of command, wow. right? The, the automation behind everything. And um, we're excited to bring another command day to everybody. So we always get good uh, attendance and we, it gets you to go jump into action, right? Instead of just listening and learning about something to take some type of action and maybe expand the use case on what we can use these for. Um, so lunch will be, uh, at least here in Naperville, lunch will be here probably 10 minutes or so, five or 10 minutes. Um, so we'll let everyone know once that comes. Um, and then we're gonna introduce some of our sponsors. Here at Naperville, we have uh, our attorney, Patrick Kelly. Um, I use Patrick on like 95% of my deals, pretty much every time that I, every chance that I get, I've worked with a ton of different attorneys. I've had um, good and bad experiences and Patrick and his team is always amazing. Like regardless of the day, his communications there, he's really good with clients. So um, I'll pass out some of his cards that he has, but you know, he, he bought us lunch here at the Naperville Market Center. And Patrick, I don't know if you wanna introduce yourself or say, Anything you want to chat on real quick? Uh, yeah, no, but mostly just thank you for having me. I'm happy to hopefully bring lunch. It was supposed to be here half hour ago, so hopefully Pot Bellies will be here soon. Uh, but yeah, no, I've been working with Noel for a number of years, and it's always uh, great working with he and his team and a bunch of the other uh, Keller Williams agents as well. Looks like my website's up there. So I've got myself, uh, two other attorneys now, uh, Beth Stoll and Laurel Steele are two other attorneys that help and we've got one dynamo paralegal christiana um, and i'm on all the emails uh, so you'll see me on every email i send or receive um, i text call like noel said any day pretty much any time you can get me any anytime you need i know your business is 24 7 and so i try to make mine the same way so i'm here to help uh, answer any questions uh, i think i give some cards to noel if you want to reach out to me feel free to email text anytime um, and uh, well, it sounds like you're gonna have a good session so thanks for having me Awesome. Thanks, Patrick. And for all of our sponsors, if you guys could talk to somebody in the, the room with you, we'd love to put your contact information in the chat because we have agents all over that would love to hear from you. Yeah, we'll get we'll get Patrick's in, in our chat as well uh, shortly. Um, do you want to go to um, the other slide that we have? Cool. So um, we have Amy uh, with Guaranteed Rate. Um, I don't know if Amy's got a microphone, if you have a few minutes to kind of jump in and tell us about yourself and, and, and agents that you work with. I'm not sure if she's in. I'm here. Thank you. Thank awesome. you everybody for having me today. Can you hear me okay? Yep, yep, sure can. Very good. My name is Amy LeBeau. I'm at the Lombard location of Guaranteed Rate. I'm a loan officer there at Bianca Stone's office. We are, just to give you an idea, landmark-wise, we are on Main Street in Lombard, right near the Dairy Queen. That is very famous in Lombard, so you can find us very quickly that way. Otherwise, the number uh, and my email is listed on there. You can use that number anytime you need it. Since your business is not nine to five, neither is ours. So we are available anytime. One of the things um, I quickly like to talk about before you guys get started. Can you hear me? Yeah. Everything's okay. One of the things I like to talk about on my slides, the first slide talks about our co-marketing here um, at Guaranteed Rate. What we do is, is we have a basically a flyer that we would put out with your listing. You can use that to share. You can put that in a PDF to share by email, or we can have it at your listing. And it lists, um, and my, I have an example that is has Darlene, our realtor here today and myself on a listing. We pull it from the MLS, so we use your pictures. We also could include a picture with rates on it. Secondly, we have a approval process. It's called Approval Express, where if you wanna take a, maybe get something to stand out for your client, your buyer, it makes you look good, where we start the approval process right away. So, you know, if you would like, we can have your buyer gather all the information needed to get the approval process going, and we would work with them that way as well. Um, I also like to say um, for your buyers, you know, you can talk to them about what the property is going to cost. I can talk to them about what they'll pay every month and how they're going to make that work. 
So that's why I do that. I want to thank everybody today, and I appreciate you having me, and I hope you enjoy the lunch. Thank you. Awesome. And then do we have Gina here as well? You got the glasses, not me. <laughs> okay, where do I look? This is really trippy, trippy, trippy. Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm Gina Borman with Achosa Home Warranty. And the big differentiator with us is that you can choose your own contractor. So instead of the contractor working for the warranty company, they actually work for the homeowner themselves, which is a real big uh Game changer with customer service uh, really changes things. Um, no longer do you guys get the call saying their contractor. <laughs> so that's a that's a real big game changer in the industry. And um, the other thing I guess too with me is that I'm uh, extremely transparent. So they'll always know what they're getting. They'll always know what they're buying. And then I am unfortunately available 24 seven like the rest of you. So <laughs> that's the other thing. Um, so yeah, that's it. I, I'm in Downers Grove. Um, so thanks for having me. Thanks, Gina. Uh, we've used. Maybe I'll add one one sure. quick note. Yep. I, uh, they, uh, Gina and Amy remind me. I should have said. So my office is in uh, downtown Naperville. Just so you all know, I'm right up the street next to Quigley's Irish Pub. So, <laughs> just so you know, I'm I'm right here in town. Perfect. Uh, so I charge a flat fee of four fifty. Yep. Yeah, and I'll and I'll tell you. Uh, a lot of times when I'm talking to clients, I'm like, we, we've worked with attorneys that are um, more than four fifty, and um, to be honest with you, Patrick does more for a lesser price, which is which is awesome. Uh, just to piggyback on Gina too, we, we've used Gina and Achosa a Home Warranty as well, and they've been fantastic. Like she said, that the main thing that um, our clients like is your clients get to choose the contractors. It's not whoever the home warranty wants to use one of their contacts. So they can go out and kind of shop around and use one of their people. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a, a great service. So um, cool. Amy, do we have any, anyone else? Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll pull it up. We'll get Gina's and everyone else's to send out. Um, I don't know, is there any other sponsors, Amy? That's all that I had for the list. Yeah. Hello, in Aurora, we have Move Out Man. You gotta stand up fast here so they can see you. Yeah, sure. And they gave us a very nice lunch from Panera. Sure. This is Justin. Yeah, how's it going? Um, yeah, so uh, my name's Justin. I have my partner, Tommy and Jeff over here. Um, we're Move Out Man Moving Company. Uh, we're a family-owned moving service kind of based in the uh, suburbs of Chicago. We operate all throughout um, a bunch of different suburbs. Um, and when we set out to, to create equipment, we had one big goal in mind, and that was providing a much higher quality moving service, much more personalized one, kind of more like a white glove uh, moving service. And we kind of try and express that through two things. First is just uh, excellent customer service, really good customer service. One of the things that sets us apart is we give in-person estimates. Unlike a lot of other moving companies, and uh, this just allows me and Tommy to use our combined experience in the industry to give a much better idea of how long it was going to take. Um, rarely do we over or underestimate. Uh, also, this kind of just lets us build uh, a much uh, build some trust and peace of mind with the customer, and just allows us to make a real connection with them. Um, you know, oftentimes we have conversations with customers and everything. Um, the entire process of the first call to the estimate to the actual move, an owner is always involved. And on the service side of things, um, we take a lot of pride in how, how we wrap everything, we wrap everything really well, um, and take a lot of pride in how well we get things in the truck and move. Um, the second thing to kind of propagate that uh, uh, excellent uh, service is a really good employee culture. Um, every single person that puts on a move out man uh, uniform, uh, it goes through a really rigorous training process. and hiring process, um, every employee is vetted, is vetted by at least one owner. We look for things like professionalism, experience, um, communication, uh, and respect. Um, we want our movers to enjoy what they do and when they work. I think that that really does a good job. Making sure that they want to do a good service. We pay them really competitive wages for a uh, moving company. If they know they're getting paid better, uh, they're doing better work, and they uh, feel a lot more fulfilled in what they do. Um, and we kind of want them to get the same feeling that we do, the same feeling of pride and happiness when a customer uh, is smiling after a really excellent service. So um, that's pretty much it. That's a little bit about, about, a little bit about us. Hope we uh, get to potentially work with some of you guys in the future. Um, we appreciate every single call that we get and any business that we get 24 7. Um, if anyone has any, any questions, feel free to ask uh, either now or after the fact. Uh, our, all of our information is in the uh, Zoom chat. So thank you guys. Thank you. Cool, cool. Yeah, thank you. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. Um, you know, they 
take the time and money to come in out, out and feed us. So, you know, give them an opportunity to earn your business. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll be very happy as well. Um, Amy, do we have our, do you have your, our spe special guests for you to introduce ready? All right, can you guys all hear me? This is weird, Gina, you're right. <laughs> We got a new setup in Downers Grove. Well, um, I'm just going to echo Noel and thank everybody for being here virtually and in person today. And I'm super excited to announce that we have an awesome guest speaker. His name's Counter Tuck. He's going to open up the event for us. Um, he's been in the Morristown location of KW for five years. He's dual licensed in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So if you guys are looking for referral partners, make sure to connect with him. Uh, he's a market center tech trainer. So he shares the same role that Noel, Michelle, and I all do. Um, he's also the ALC tech chair and the communications chair for KWYP in his area. Uh, he's on the number one team in his office. The Sam Lepore group and in his spare time he likes to hang out with his dogs and he's a big avid Eagles fan so Connor is going to show us all about smart plans what you can do with them and how they can really help streamline uh, your business and, and automate some stuff so Connor take it away all right well thank you uh, very much Amy appreciate uh, all the help that you've done getting everything set up here and uh, this is a pretty big crowd I'm, I've done a couple of the national uh, live streams a few times we've had some big crowds there but this is definitely a good one for here so i'm going to go through a just starting just kind of an overview obviously today we're talking about smart plans for me smart plans and follow-up is the missing sauce for most people in their business you are all really good at talking to people and i know that you guys all have detail-oriented mindsets and due diligence you know when you do your contract to close the problem becomes for most agents is we can't bank on this consistent supply of business. We find ourselves, oh, one month we get three and we feel good, we got a couple of referrals, but sometimes it feels a little haphazard the way that the business comes in. And I'm sure all of us have sat down at one point and said to ourselves, wow, wouldn't it be great if I could automate, create a little bit more consistency in my life and things like that. So that's what we're gonna kind of jump into. I am also going to actually hop into command today um, I'm going to walk you around the Smart Plans applet as a whole. Um, again, I'm not sure whether we have all experts in this class or all newbies in this class. So some of the uh, information might be redundant from some other trainings that you've done, but I always like to make one very nice comprehensive start to finish uh, attacking all uh, levels. Also too, I am uh, more than willing to take questions as we go. Um, if there are some specifics that you guys want to put in the chat, or if you do want to just kind of stop, uh, stop script for a second, and if you want to just uh, chime in and ask something, uh, I'm, I'm more than okay with that. And Amy, I have to, again, thank you. And we're going to get started here uh, for that intro. I'm going to bring you around to all my family gatherings. And as I enter the house, I'll have you do that intro for me as well, too. So I appreciate that. So just send me the Zoom link. Perfect. All right. That sounds good. Awesome. Well, yeah, guys, again, um, Connor Tuck, this will be my sixth year in real estate getting into uh, November, uh, my third year in a row capping um, and all the other roles that you guys kind of heard. So Here's my deal with smart plans. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm from Jersey, I'm from the Northeast, so I can be a little forward. Um, I don't have the Southern charm that most of the, the Texans have in, in, K, in the KW world. So I'm gonna call a couple people out today, not specifically, obviously, I don't know any of you uh, on a personal level like that, but I'm gonna be really specific about what you need to be doing in your business. And if you're not doing it, you really, you really do. And you need to either make it better or start. So let's just kind of get, get rolling here. For me, smart plans are the automation of your business, right? They are what I consider your first assistant, right? So regardless of whether you're you know, seated at your computer or not, your messaging needs to go out on an ongoing basis. I just came back from a three-day little uh, friend's vacation in the Poconos, went and did a couple wineries. And that was all well and good, but I was off, I was off right? I wasn't working. But I still had close to three to 400 messages every single day going out to my database of people, right? So it's that method for you to go enjoy your life, physically show homes, physically go on appointments for listing, make do cold calls, whatever you want to do. But that automation needs to continue. And I think the other thing that people get really hung up on smart plans is they think in terms of the 36 touch. And I love a good 36 touch. It's in the red book and that's a really good model. But some people, I think, use that as an excuse to not actually do some of the follow-up, right? They put this long smart plan on and then they, it's, they set it and forget it, right? And, and there, there's truth to that, but without 
periodic check-ins of you personally and without adding that personal touch to it, what's differentiating you from just another spam email that just sort of gets out, right? It's, it's that combination of your touches. And I'll kind of go into a little bit of my theory about what are tier one touches versus tier two and tier three, right? So that's sort of the start there. They range, smart plans, right? They range across a whole host of variables, right? They can be broad, they can be specific, they can be real estate related, uh, rapport building, they can be really short in duration, they can be really long in duration. But for me, the most important thing, and this is a little bit what, what I think gets miss, missed a little bit, is that the most important thing is that you're touching your clients. The second most important thing is what's involved in those touches and the wording and the content you use in those touches. So many agents get paralysis by analysis with their smart plans because they spend a month crafting the perfect email when all they could have done is picked up the phone and give them a, give them a call or just wrote even half of what they wanted to write originally and still get 90 to 95% of the effectiveness of that touch. And again, the whole point of all these touches is what? When they think about real estate, they think about you. That is the, that is the only game we are playing here in follow-up. When they think about real estate, they think of you. So the consistency of the touches is so much more important than the quality and content of the touches. Now, I'm not saying the quality and content is not super important. Of course it is. But don't get hung up just because you're having writer's block for getting something out to your people, right? And that's why getting into the Smart Plans library and just taking something that's a little more pre-existing and then just tweaking it, sometimes that can be a little more helpful, right? As opposed to, you know, starting from complete scratch. So... I'm gonna just keep coming down here a little bit. And what I wanna start doing is I'm gonna start my screen share and I'm gonna actually flip us into command. But I wanna just separate us real quick for the two different types of smart plans that, and, and kind of how the system evolved before you really dive into the actual, like let's look, show and build. So when we started with smart plans, we all know there were sort of a 10 stock smart plans inside of command, right? We couldn't create custom ones. We couldn't do all that yet. The library hadn't been published, all the what's news that, you know, the top trending ones, none of that was there. So we just had these 10 stock ones. And to me, the probably the two most powerful ones that, look, if you don't have your entire database set up on these, you probably should, or some version of this, right? The first one, the biweekly neighborhood nurture. That is a 26 touch throughout the year, good real estate content based on neighborhoods where your person lives. Now, I've heard every excuse and argument and objection in the book about well, the data is not perfect. And well, I don't know exactly where they want. And, you know, I don't care. The most important thing is that you get something to them. Second is content, right? I know that the data on some things might not be exactly as if you went to the MLS and did a nice statistical breakdown and you did it all. And you said, well, it's actually off by two days here. And it's off by $5,000 here. Do you know who cares about that? You do. Do you know who really doesn't care about that much? The client. They just want to see something good and professional to you. And it's a talking point so that you can then go into more substantial conversations with them over the phone or in person, right? We aren't closing clients on emails. We're not closing clients on emails. We're closing them face-to-face -face or over the phone, right? That's our tier one touches. You can build rapport. You can get the mind associations. You can do some of those things via the emails, the text and things like that. But you're really just buttering them up and, and setting up the stage so that when you do make that phone call, when you do make that conversion call, that touch and things like that, that's when you can really hammer it home. Okay. So here's why I kind of like that 36 touch, right? We do it through a combination of touches. And I, I always write a little bit here because I always find myself forgetting, right? The biweekly neighborhood email becomes the backbone of the real estate content that you can deliver to your audience potentially. 26 times through the year, right? right? 52, 26, right? So that's 26 touches, right? We know we need to do a 36 touch anyway. So wouldn't it be nice to take 26 of those 36 and just pretty much automate them with good real estate content based on where they're actually going to be in local and things like that. So that's for me, just obviously in a nutshell, the overview of smart plans, right? I don't think I'm, pre I don't think I'm saying anything here that should be too foreign to anybody, but I want to make sure that we get consistent and then we'll worry about the content and we'll continue to develop that content as we go. So I'm gonna go ahead here and let me just try and get my screen share rolling here. Got my little screen, click on the little window, hit the blue share button. All right, awesome. So you guys should be seeing my command screen here now, right? I think I might see a head or two nodding. Okay. Yeah, we so can obviously, see it. Okay, perfect. All right, good. So obviously I'm here at the command home screen. I'm gonna just click on my little red KW up here, go down to my smart plan applet. All right. So the first things first, 
getting your smart plans from the library and getting them into being and being able to use them, right? I, I'm, this is obviously loading up here and you'll see I have some things here. Let me just flip over to the library, right? Because this is really, if you don't have anything, if you've never done anything in command or you've never done anything with smart plans, this is gonna be where you're gonna wanna come first, okay? So for me, these featured, right? These eight, these are sort of the ones that are the most important. These are the ones that we've, we've had and I, I see that we've had a little bit of a uh, user interface change here, which I sort of like. But we have a couple of these featured ones that they're, that they're bringing up. Again, you should be popping in here once a week at minimum. Just come see what, what else is new in here. Because I always say, make your smart plans a little bit smaller and then be able to sort of stack them, right? And take your buyer, or take your seller, or take your investor or whoever it is down this little journey, right? Of how that content wants to be delivered to them. And you're doing it through a tactful use of these smaller smart plans. I'm a big fan of shortening smart plans maybe only five days or 15 days or something like that, as opposed to just these, again, set it and forget it, six month plans, right? The bi-weekly neighborhood nurture is the first one. And to me, I, I like that Marty ended up putting a monthly call plan in here because I think that's a little bit more appropriate, but the quarterly call plan, right? This one down here in the KW, uh, right, right here, right? Quarterly call plan. Guys, if you can't call them four times a year, should they really be in your database? Right? Our database is not just to put a bunch of phone numbers and stuff in. It's a relationship book, right? That's more of what it should be. We should be in relationship with these people. I think that every single person in your database should have at least four tier one touches set up for them. Look, maybe if you don't physically call them, but you do want to do a pop by or something for past client, that's fine. Intermix it. But the biweekly neighborhood nurture and the quarterly call plan, just as the two baby blankets, the smart plans in your database, that's 30 touches right there. 26 good real estate retouches and four nice tier one touches and reminders and things like that. Okay. So that's the first part there. And obviously, if you want it, find it, hit add smart plan, right? Just by hitting add smart plan, it's going to pull it from the cloud library of Keller Williams and it's going to come right into your command system that you're using and then you can go and literally within a, a couple of clicks just start adding your contacts to it and things like that uh, a word for the a word of caution on a quarterly call plan stagger that right so you don't want to go in and set 100 people up on the quarterly call plan for all starting today uh, you'll get 100 task notifications and that might drive you bonkers so i try and limit it especially those quarterly call plans because again it's not cold calling right these are more relationship calls i'll keep it to maybe five to seven a day Right, five to seven a day is more than enough. I can have good quality conversations with them where I don't feel like I have to get, you know, oh my God, I have two minutes on the phone, I gotta get to the next, you know. Those are about quality, not, not, not necessarily quantity when you're starting to do some of those touches. So stagger those down just a little bit, right? Same thing with the biweekly neighborhood nurture, just add the smart plan, bring it in and just select one neighborhood roughly where you think they live or roughly where you think they might go. And then again, you can use that as a talking point thing. If you ever want me to add any from onto this, you know, we can do that as well, right? So those are kind of my, again, my first two. I like some of the other ones. I personally don't use them as much as I do the biweekly neighborhood nurture and the quarterly call plan. But some of the other ones in here, I do like as well. I've taught a class on this open house follow-up that I think is really good. So go in and explore, right? That's what this is meant for. Based on your business and your, your three pillars, or your four pillars of lead generation and the, the areas that you like to focus on best, some of these smart plans are going to be more appealing to you and some won't. And that's okay, right? We are all different agents. We're all different people. And therefore, sort of our communication style might be a little bit different and where we, where we choose to emphasis. So I'm going to come down here and here's the ones, you know, obviously doing a, a touch of a shameless plug here. The one that I've really liked and I've really started talking to a lot of people about is the buyer education um, uh, smart plan. And I made that literally, I had wanted to teach a class on smart plans. I'm going back almost 18 months ago or a year ago. And I had one person show up and it was just, you know, was, I think it might've been in, in the middle of COVID or something like that. And I had just explained this in theory. And I, I said, you know, he's like, hey, can you send that to me? And I said, I, okay, sure. Publishing on the smart plans library was the easiest way for me to physically get it to him. What ended up happening after that with other people using it is, is you know, that's not, wasn't really my intention. So I just want to come in here and I'm just going to go for a little search because I saw that they just switched some stuff here. So if you're ever doing this, just like I'm doing it, and you're sitting down, you're saying, okay, I want to start doing some business in this area or doing this, right? Come up and search by it, right? Search by the name if you know someone specific or your words in a description, right? I always think going in and doing it by the smart plan name. Sometimes you can just type the word in, right? Buyer. Let's just see what comes back. What are some of the smart plans that come up from this, right? Buyer post-closing, buyer post post-closing testimonial, right? Six to nine months for buyer, 12-month nurture, new buyer nurture, right? 
one for Spanish buyers. So these are all really good ways to come in. And if nothing more, you just come in and, and read them, just go through them and learn some of the steps that other agents are doing, right? When you know more, you're going to be able to implement more. So here's the one that I, I you know, that I ended up putting up. So it's, it's, it's gone up you know, a little bit more, which is nice, but I just want to show you some of the, the steps for this, because this is sort of my, this is sort of my point with, with boiling the smart plans down a little smaller, right? This is meant for Guys, we do a lot of Facebook leads through command, right? That's a really big and really helpful facet. But what's probably the number one objection that you get from agents who say, oh, I don't want to run them through those, or I haven't gotten anything from Facebook leads, or you know what, they're a dime a dozen, but they're not quality. Every lead is quality. It just depends on where they are in their pipeline or in their timeline, in your pipeline, however you want to chalk that up, right? So for me, this came to a, okay, I'm generating a lot of these Facebook leads. Most of them are six months or more to a purchasing decision. So I know that follow-up is gonna be really important here. But what I find is most common, I don't know, is it's, it's, not a, it's not that they're not ready right now, it's that they don't have enough information about the process. And so they will naturally delay getting started because they say, I don't know enough yet, right? So there's more of an information gap rather than a financial quality gap, right? I mean, basically with an FHA, using some concessions and things like that, you can you only really need maybe five to eight thousand, five to ten thousand dollars in the bank and a half decent credit score above six hundred to, to purchase, right? So and but most people kind of don't realize that they think, oh, you have to do twenty percent or oh, I have to have at least forty thousand in the bank because that's what my dad did or something like that. So for me, when I'm going to try and do follow up, I'm always in the back of my mind thinking, oh, I don't want to be annoying. Right. Have we ever, has anyone else ever thought that, right? Like you're afraid to text a client or you're afraid to call a client or send something to them because you don't want to come off as annoying, right? The only way that you are annoying is if you're not delivering any value to them, right? If you just call them every month, hi, how you doing? If you know of anybody looking to buy, sell, rent, or invest, give me a call. I'll right, talk to you in a month. Call them back. Hi, you're looking. They're going to stop taking your phone call, right? But the point is, if we can start peppering in and layering all of our follow up with some sort of a educational component, I always find that's the most well received by clients and they end up appreciating it. And I've had people that I've converted after, you know, six, nine months or something like that, that come and sit with me and they say, we go back to those emails all the time because we just like to sort of read up on it and refresh and it made us feel more confident. And so maybe they got started six months to a year earlier than when they thought, because now we've closed that in. Oh, yeah. so, right. I understand. <laughs> all right. And I think we just got a little bit, uh, a little yeah. bit of background noise. So I'm gonna ask you, if you don't mind uh, throwing yourself on yeah, mute there. It. It, was, it was a lot of fun. We dealt with that too, but yeah. I feel like it made it stronger. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, that's where I like grew up. There we go. I think, okay, I think, I think we grabbed them there. All right, guys. So let's keep rolling with this. So this, this first buyer education email, let's actually dive into this. So what's the point of it, right? The point is I wanted 10 emails fully automated. Once I set it up, I don't have to touch it again. It's going to go out really quick. I've seen a lot of people play around with the, the days in between these, and I'm totally okay with that. Um, I wanted this to be a, for example, I met a hairdresser a couple months ago, right? And she was coming in. I hadn't seen her before. And I, I was chatting with her as I always try and do, letting her know this, right? She said, me and my boyfriend are thinking about it, but we're probably two years away, blah, blah, blah. I ended up sending this to her. Now she's moving out of state. So I was able to kind of help her just point her in the right direction but she was like this was what changed our minds right we didn't we realized we didn't need to wait as long as we thought we did so that for me was sort of the intention i just basically took my buyer consultation right as any i'm sure people do buyer consultations right i just took what i basically explained in my buyer consultation and i just made it an email i just put them in emails right this is my tone this is how i speak this is the, the, the common things that I always say to my buyers, and I just gave it to them in writing, right? So getting started with finances, wait one day, and then we jump right back into some stuff about, you know, what can we do right now, right? I, I, and again, I, I try and address some of those biggest questions that the buyers have right in here. Again, just always coming from that educational mindset and just trying to consistently give them value. And you can see what this is. It's just sending a simple email and waiting a day or two. Send a simple email, wait a day or two. But again, all I do is I put literally open my laptop, put their name in, put their email in and add to the smart plan. That's it, right? So there's not this big burden of getting it started or getting it off the ground or anything like that, right? It's a really simple stretch that way, okay? So that's sort of my first one there. Now I've started and I, I was hoping to have had it completely finished by today. Um, I have to admit that I didn't get all the way there. 
I am currently in the process of moving out of one place into another place while at the same time renovating a bathroom and then trying to run a full business. So sometimes things get pushed a little bit. But the next one that I really want to put out is just the compliment to the buyer education, right? So it's the seller education smart plan. It's just attacking the other you know, the other hand of our business here. So I'm going to be finishing this up hopefully by over the weekend or something like that. But if you ever wanted to create your own custom smart plan, here's how you do it, right? We're getting into a, a creating a custom smart plan. It starts pretty blank on the left-hand side and you have action. So all we're going in here is saying, okay, first, what am I trying to accomplish with this? Never start, never just start adding stuff in or writing stuff until you are absolutely clear on the goal of what you're trying to accomplish with that smart plan. I think that smart plans are sort of like Batman's tool belt, right? He has a little gadget for each scenario he's in, right? He doesn't just go in blindly and start throwing stuff everywhere, right? He addresses the situation, uses that very specific one. Same thing with the smart plan and a client. I met a client based on our conversation that we had with them, pre basically pre-qualifying or going through that. I understood where some of their concerns were and where, where they felt like they were in their timeline. And I'm going to go very specifically into my smart plans library and grab that combination of smart plans and stack them and put them in the right order that I think is going to be for the best benefit of that specific person, right? So over here, just obviously clicking on any one of these to add them in, tasks, making phone calls, sending the emails, sending the text direct, if you want to do that, or if you just want to set the task to send the text manually, you can do it both ways. The delays, I think this is one that people miss, right? You say, well, okay, Connor, you want to start stacking all these smart plans. Well, isn't that just more work for me to have to come into? Well, it could be. Or you could sit down and actually think about it for like five seconds and realize that I can do one smart plan leading into another smart plan leading into another smart plan. And that's sort of the flow that you can do by having them auto trigger that as soon as this one completes, then it goes into this next one. Like for the buyer education, I don't do it all the time, but for some of them, depending on the client where they are, I'll have that get started. And then I'll just have it roll right into either a biweekly neighborhood nurture. I'll have it then kick off the quarterly call plan or, you know, whatever it is, just to have that all be kind of nice and neat and tidy. And again, it's one last step that I have to do. As you come down here, you have the choice, guys. You can either do simple emails or you can actually make something in design. Now, for my young professionals chapter that I run the emails and all this stuff that goes out there, because we do smart plans for everything. And we have about an audience of 3,600 in our region that are eligible. So that's part of our recruiting. I do a design. I actually go into designs and I make this and I craft it and I make it look good with a proper header and footer and things like that. If you want to spend the time and do that, you can. I sometimes think a little bit more of a simple email is a little bit cleaner. It doesn't feel as much of like a marketing email as much as it just feels like me trying to have a conversation with them, right? Sometimes it comes off a little bit more genuine that way. So, but this, this would be the way if you did want to toggle and search for that design that you created, you could obviously do it right there. The other thing you want to start doing as best as you can is making something that's meant for bulk personal. And how do you do that? And it's through merge tags, right? And this is, if anybody's used constant contact or any of the other major kind of, you know, um, lion desk and some things like that, merge fields are in a lot of that. But that's my way of saying, you know, hi, James, as opposed to hi, so-and-so, right? You know, you want it to be a little bit more specific. So those are just found right here. And you could just obviously throw some of those things in as well, okay? So again, just try and have that conversation with them, right? You have, you have a, a limit here of 2,000 characters per email. So you can't write a novel. And you're not supposed to write a novel. That, has anybody gotten an email that they had to like scroll twice to get to the bottom of and said, oh, I'm so ecstatic to read this email. Let me know who you are because I'll start sending you some, some longer emails. But I don't have many of my clients that want to do that, right? I'm trying to be quick, short, to the point, set the stage, what I'm going to talk to you about, what it is and why it's important, and what I'm going to tell you about next time. That's your flow right? Keep it nice and simple and straightforward, right? And for this one, I just wanted to kind of get started with, hey, if you're a seller and you're getting ready, there's a lot of decisions that you're going to have to make, sort of a pain versus pleasure inference there, right? Saying like, there's a lot of things you kind of need to know about, and you, aren't you so lucky that I'm here to help give you that information, right? I mean, that's a little bit of a superfluous way of doing it, but it's sort of that, that scripting uh, tool that we use. So again, come in here, I added an email, set a delay, add an email, set a delay, add an email, set a delay. And that's going to continue. And I'm probably going to get, I don't think I'll have quite as many as on the buyer side, but I'll probably get up to about eight total touches on this. And then again, fully automated, ready to go out, everything like that. So I know we're kind of, we're already kind of up here at about 140 local time for me. Um, I know we kind of got started right about 115. So I wanted to make sure I left some time um, available for any questions, content questions, specific how-to questions, if there are just some more in general theories of questions or things like that that you want to do, 
that's that's totally fine. This one thing I did want to show you here, though. So we know that in a lot of other databases, there's this uh, auto auto triggering, right? That happens when a contact or when something inside of your database takes a specific action, what then happens after that? Now, inside a command right now, I still believe the only way that we are doing trigger events are by adding a specific contact tag to that buyer. So what I had um, my RTT in our region, George Kelly is really good. He has this and he uses this on his team as well uh, for that buyer education one. And literally he just has a buyer education tag, right? So instead of having to go in and add, you know, select them on the left, go to add bulk action, add to smart plan, add to this, whatever. All he does is when he puts a new contact inside the system, he just select, 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 add tag, and boom, they all get the tag. And then the smart plan kicks off after that, right? So another way that we're kind of even backing up even more into this is, let's say you decide to build a landing page, right? For your open house. I know some people like to do electronic sign-ins. You can use Open Home Pro, that's fine. But what I've taught and what I like a lot of people to do is just build a landing page, right? And you just basically take the listing that I would normally put up top and then I put the lead gen form down here. I just simply flip it, right? And I put the lead gen form a little higher up. And so you could do it on the bit.ly link, you can do a QR code, you can have them physically bring your laptop or your iPad to the stand or something. So walk into the open house, I sign in, right? Good to go. I'm already putting my information right into your command system. So that way me as the agent, when I come home after that open house, I'm not taking 15 sheets worth of paper or trying to download a list from an outside thing. Everybody's already created in the, in the command themselves. I just then sort by most recently created, select all, add tag of open house, and add tag of buyer education. And boom, all those smart plans kick off right then. My follow-up begins and all I get to do now is follow up on the task list that come off of that. So I do know that in the future, this is something that they're going to start expanding significantly. Here's why, they, they could do it today. Here's why they're not doing it today. Auto triggers are a tricky thing. And this is also why I think they didn't want you to be able to select more than I think 50 at a time for a little bit than 100 at a time. And now you can select up to 500 at a time. We kind of need to teach everybody how to use the system well enough before they start getting in here and accidentally setting up 30,000 people on smart plans that they didn't sign up for. And then we would get this huge backlash across the country of people being signed up without their discretion and things like that. So being a little careful about that is, I think, is always a, a precaution. So anything, and I'm going to just pause here for a second to take a peek here in the chat. I just want to see if there's anything in specific. Um, New smart plans, that was what you put in there. Okay, good. So again, if, if anybody has anything and they want to jump in and ask a couple questions about what we're taking a look at, we can. As as, as we're doing that, feel free to jump in anytime. I'm going to hey, review, I think, yeah, go ahead. Hey, real quick, no, Noel Marrero from the uh, Naperville office. Um, I just want to chime in. I've been using your buyer education smart plan for a few months. Okay. Oh, and it's fantastic. I've gotten clients to respond saying how great the information was that we're giving it to them in little bite-sized pieces. So yeah. I just want to, you know, just commend you for that. And, uh, you know, thanks for creating it. I'm really looking forward to your seller education smart plan, but it's some, something that I was able to go into the library, download it, and then I customized very few things on there and I was able to just set it and forget it. So uh, it's it's a great example. I just wanted to kind of give you a little testimonial on uh, on what you were just talking about as well. Well, yeah, thank you. And again, my intention for creating it was never notoriety. It was just because I needed something for my business, right? And that's how some of these best smart plans came about. It's one person, one guy, one gal sitting down and saying, you know what? I have this conversation over and over and over again with my clients. And wouldn't it be nice if I could automate a little bit of, or get a, get ahead of it, right? That's all that was. And I can guarantee you that pretty much everybody that's on these calls right now has some situation in their business where they're like, wow, I have a repeating conversation. Repeating conversations are the start to a good smart plan. So just remember that as you go forward, if you do find yourself maybe explaining what escalating offers are, right? Or an option offer, or what does it really mean for me to waive a home inspection or to waive an appraisal, right? What now that's kind of the, that's kind of the conversations of the, of the day right now, right? Of these multiple bids and things like that. So maybe that's where we start a new smart plan. And again, it could be three emails over three days. It could be that short, that sweet, but it's something that again, going into that tool belt and being able to apply it very specifically is sort of the kind of a, the, the goal with a lot of that stuff. Um, the, my favorite smart plan, it's not, it's not one that I've created. Guy down in Baltimore is um, 
name's escaping me, but might be Nick Waldner or something like that. But they did about 350, 400 deals maybe last year going back at this point. And I, and I heard him speak at, I think, the last time we all got to get together in, uh, in Dallas uh, at Family Reunion. And it's the, if anybody knows of this one, it's the 555 plan. You've probably seen it and you're like, what is this 555 plan? The reason why I like it, remember when I was kind of making the joke like, oh, if you keep calling your database just every month, just asking, hi, how are you doing? How are the kids? Great. Call you in a month. Hi, how are the kids? How are you doing? You know, what are you looking to buy, sell rent? They're going to stop answering your phone call. So for your sphere and past clients, this is my absolute favorite smart plan that I have ever heard of because it is always going to get you a good response. The 555 is simply this. Take your year and split it up into quarters. Okay. I want you to plan for events. Now, every new agent stops me dead in my tracks right there and says, Connor, I'm a new agent. I don't have enough money, prowess, anything to put on an event. And I said, okay, is there anywhere in your town to get a bite to eat or get a drink? They say, yes. I said, great. Then you have enough resources at your disposal to put on an event. You can do something as simple as, and obviously abide by, obviously there's some lessening and more COVID restrictions, you know, just be cognizant. But the intention is, hey, I'm going to get together. We're going to do a happy hour from five to seven at this little bar. And uh, the first 10 people that show up, I'm going to buy your drink for you. If a beer is five bucks, I'm spending about 50 bucks to get together with people. So what I do is I first call five people on a Monday. Hi. Just want to let you know, end of the quarter, I'm going to be having a couple people for a happy hour. I would absolutely love for you to be there. Great. About a month later, find them on social media. Find those same five people on social media. Find, find the post that they just did or find something that they just did. Give them a comment, right? And we all know the saying, you know, liking something sort of like a high five, commenting like a hug, right? So make sure you comment, ask a question, be diligent on that. About a month later, so those same five people, I'm going to send them a text message. Just, hey, just want to make sure, confirming you're going to be there for the happy hour on the, uh, at the end of the month, right? Now I've done that five people a day, right? Five, 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 right? So you have five people, send that, make that call. A month later, you're giving them a, a social touch and a month later, you're giving them a text. And then what happens? We have the event and I might have invited 80 people to this event. How many people are gonna show up? Eight to 10, maybe 12 to 15 if I get lucky. But then I make the next call for the next quarter. And what does the call sound like? Hey, we missed you at the event. We would have really liked to have seen you, but don't worry. At the end of this quarter, we're going to be doing a free tread event at the office, nine to noon, Saturday morning. Bring all your tax papers, whatever you got. We're going to have the truck there for three hours. We'll have some food and stuff for you. Every time I'm calling them, they're wondering what we got going on, right? Every time I call, they're, they're, I, I'm there being invited to something fun that they couldn't just go out and find on their own. That's why I like the 5 by 5 so much. Because again, I'm offering them something and you know what? I never, ever ask them for a referral. I know that might be sacrilege. I'm not a KWU approved a trainer, so I don't really know what the exact, you know, what. I never ask for any of that. But what does happen naturally in that conversation? Oh, Connor, so sorry we couldn't make it. We were, we were out of town that week, but it sounded like a lot of fun. Please let us know about that next one. By the way, how's work? Thank you, right? Like the easiest in to now I can start telling them about you know, about real estate and, and start talking about that. And they all want to know. Everybody looks from the outside in at real estate. It's like we're fishing. We're, it's like we're little fish in the aquarium, right? Everybody doesn't move every day, but everybody kind of wants to know what's going on a little bit. So they're always going to ask you. But again, if you keep coming off asking them too strongly, they're just going to start to get that sour taste in their mouth a little bit. Like you're starting to become that commission brass type agent, right? You're just always calling me if you want business, you want business. Now, you got to ask it a couple times and there's ways to do that, right? But that's not really the point of this. It's more of how can I always get my phone call received? And by delivering good educational value and by inviting them to things that they otherwise would not be able to do on their own, I have found are the two best ways for any message I'm trying to deliver to them to be received without being rejected. So that would be sort of my, my, my two cents on that. Um, again, any other questions, if anybody has anything and wants to jump in for a second while I'm still going on my little uh, soliloquy here, uh, feel free to jump in. And uh, I'm just coming in and checking the chat one more time here just to make sure. So, Mark, you asked a good question here. Um, you saw that, Amy, you're going to be doing a uh, second half. Okay, good. So how do you start a smart plan? Let's do that. I like that. Let's make this very specific. So here's my method. Now, there are like multiple things in a database. 
there are always a couple different ways to do something, right? There's just different ways to get there. I'll show you the method that I like, right? But there are, again, other ways to do it. So where I like starting my smart plans from is on the actual contact, right? And this is how I do it for our mass communication for the YP chapter, uh, for our regional chapter. So this is the exact method that I actually do for it, right? So let's say we did that. Let's go back to that example, right? Let's say you went and did an open house and you got 10 leads, right? And let's say maybe you even did that method where you had a landing page created and then they automatically registered. So they're now an actual contact inside of your command. So the first thing that I would probably do is I would come in here and you can scroll over. Now, these are the columns that I have currently set up, but there's a column that would be really helpful. And I'm gonna click on this customized columns real quick. I really like using this created one, okay? And I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna drag it up to the top just so it's right next to the contact, right? So I've selected the created as a column that I want to be included in my contact screen here. And I want it in the first position. That's kind of what I just did here, right? So I'm just gonna hit apply real quick. And this is not part of creating a smart plan. This just helps you if you're gonna do this process, right? So I now come in here and I have my created column, right? I just held the open house on Sunday. These were the most recently created leads, right? So I just come in here, I just sort by created and boom, here are the people that were most recently put into my database. So I could literally just select them all. I could select individuals and things like that. And then you guys all see right in the middle of your screen as you begin highlighting contacts, what do you have an option for? Selecting a bulk action. So this is how I do it. I come into my database, I highlight the people who I wanna start a smart plan for. I select the bulk action. I scroll down here to add the smart plan. And then it's gonna bring this in right from the right. Then I get to come in and choose, all right, which one do I wanna do this on? So maybe I'll come up and oops, let me just, uh, there we go. So I'm just gonna select the seller education plan. And then again, I have those choices, right? So start all now. If it's a fully automated zero touch for me, meaning zero tasks for physical interaction, I'll start a hundred in a day. That doesn't matter, right? Because there's never going to be that day of judgment when a hundred tasks for phone calls come up. But again, if you're going to do that quarterly call or anything like that, I do recommend staggering them a little bit so that you don't overwhelm yourself on one day with tasks and then start getting overdue and stuff. Okay. The start on a following date. Here's what's kind of nice about this. You could do all of the maybe. A, uh, like some of the uh, holidays throughout the year, you could come in and have some of those smart plans created and some funny little, you know, wording around it or some little things. And you could set these all up to start three days before each one of those throughout the entire year and have all of those set up for people. So I think that's a kind of cool one that I had somebody shared with me, right? But then I would just literally come in here, hit confirm. And I do think there's one more screen that pops up and it's more of a Twilio authorization, just saying like, hey, we just want to remind you that if you have anything in Twilio that you're going to be using and you're going to be sending text messages that data and messaging rates apply, but you know, you just hit confirm. I don't have any of that in here. So that's it, Mark. That's really it. So I just come in, I highlight those contacts. I select that bulk action button, add to smart plan, select the smart plan I want to do, choose the delivery method and how I want it to go, and then just confirm, confirm, and you're off to the races. And that will begin immediately, right? As soon as I were to hit confirm, the first email on that would probably hit my buyer's inbox or my seller's inbox or whatever within the next two minutes. So it is quite uh, instant in the way that that gets accomplished. So Mark, I hope that uh, I hope that answered that question on how to get that uh, accomplished. All right, so I'm just uh, only a few days too. So it's just kind of coming back in the uh, chat here real quick. Uh, so I like that Amy's been dropping some stuff in here, checking the library regularly to see what's added. I'd love that one, uh, Heather, good good thing. Um, how, how Suzanne, you kind of put how we put out the, the buyer seller. So I think that explanation is sort of how we went and did it. Um, or, or I think you did a good job, right? The perfect message is not as important as getting it out, right? Less is more and a smart plan can run for a few days too. So yeah, all, all really good points. So um, if there's not anything else, uh, again, I'm willing to hang out here on for another, uh, you know, I got, I got you guys for at least another six minutes, but if there's a couple extra questions, I'm more than okay to hang out too. But I appreciate everybody, you know, jumping on. I appreciate you guys all making the time today to do this. And here's my kind of final thoughts on everything. If you have a contact inside of your database that doesn't have any follow-up plan on them, I call them driftwood. They either shouldn't be in your database or you're not doing a good enough job managing your database. That's the truth, right? So let me just stop the share here real quick so I can just kind of bring you guys back. So I want you all today to go out and do a quick audit on your database. Take a look and be realistic with yourself because you're not, you're not doing this for anybody else other than your success and your business and the health that you 
security that you're going to be able to bring your family. So maybe we can attach this to our why if you've been uh, lagging on doing this. But take a look at your database. A, how many people do you totally have in it? There are a lot of people that run the cell phone database method, right? And they say, well, I got all my people here. So that's great. But your cell phone contact list doesn't have automation attached to it. So that's a great records keeping, but it's basically the digital glorified version of a shoebox with index card, those Gary always like to start with, right? So how many people do you physically have inside of your database? Are the contacts inside of it actually clean contacts? Meaning, do they actually have good phone numbers, good emails, and a home address if applicable, right? Any spousal information or anything like that? Any notes that are associated with them? And then two, what automation do you have set up for that client? I think if everybody today could at least do the biweekly neighborhood nurture and the quarterly call plan, and you had 30 additional touches per contact going out for the rest of this year, do you think you would do more business this year than you did last year? I would hope so, right? The last thing on kind of the tiers of touches, because I, I just remembered I kind of brought that up a little bit, that 36 touch. If I got 36 phone calls from someone over the course of a year, just as like the follow-up ones, I'd be a little creeped out, right? That's a little too much high tier touches. Now, if it's your best friend and you see them twice a week anyway, okay, that's one thing, but most of our database is business relationships. It's not personal relationships, right? There's always personal gets mixed in. But anyway, so our tier one touches are physical meetings in, in Popeyes, meeting at Starbucks, consultations, things like that, and phone calls. Those are your only tier one touches. And in my world, that's the only place where conversion occurs. I don't convert on tier two and tier three. Tier two touches, which is just slightly less, would obviously be some of our text messages, some of our emails and things like that. And then really, as you get all the way down to tier three touches, that sort of like social media um, engagement and things like that. Um, and some of your other little bit more generic emails start to fall down there. So what you want to try and find is what's this really nice blend that is enough tier one touches so that I can have the converted conversations and I'm not hiding behind a, a digital message, but also not going too heavy on our really low touches thinking, well, I'm emailing all these people, you know, 300 times a year, but I'm not getting anything out of it. It's like, yeah, because your blend's not right, right? You're just, like, you're just sort of buttering up, buttering up, rapport, rapport, rapport with no conversion, right? So I always say having kind of four to six really good tier one touches over the course of the year, having somewhere closer to maybe 20 to 25-ish tier two touches, and then you can get all the way down to, you know, just a couple more tier three touches just to sort of round it out and, and make it feel like you're everywhere, right? So that would kind of be my, my couple thoughts just on there a little bit, right? Um, all right. Well, again, we're, we're coming here right to the last uh, last couple minutes, um, but again, I really appreciate everybody hopping in today, and I will be very specific with Amy. I will let her know when the seller education one is up and running, so y'all will be able to see it up there um, as well. So again, I want to thank you all. I see Amy uh, with her microphone running to the front of the classroom, ready to chat. So I appreciate everybody, and I'm going to go ahead and just quickly drop my email inside of the chat here as well. Um, I'm always happy to answer any questions. You guys are in great hands with Amy. Um, there are some other regions around some other market centers around the country who have MCTTs and they're great people, but they don't do it the way that Amy does it. So Amy, I want to give you a lot of props and thank you for, thank you for uh, training my market center. A couple of weeks ago, you did a great job. Um, and again, I appreciate everybody hopping on. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Well, thank you, Connor. I want to thank you again for anybody that didn't catch that. Connor left the Poconos and came and did this class for us. So thank you for doing that. Um, hit a big day. <laughs> um, and if anybody wasn't checking out the chat, I asked a couple people what some of their ahas were. So we said, don't spend too long putting these things together. Just get it out there, right? Um, check the library regularly. And smart plans can be short. It doesn't have to be something that runs a whole year. And then um, somebody said that they had never thought of using Connor's idea for the buyer or seller education. So that's just a huge example of how these can be leveraged for you. So Connor, again, I wanna thank you for taking the time to be with us today. 
and let everybody know it is one o'clock central time. So we're going to take a 10 minute break and we'll be back at 110 and Bobby in the Glen Ellen Market Center. He's on the tech committee. He's going to talk about the different actions um, and how you can put together a smart plan, the different features of it. And then we'll we'll roll from there on some more of the how to. So thank you guys all. And I encourage you all to talk about some ahas in your group in person as well. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks again.
I see Bobby at the front of the room. Does that mean we're ready to go? It's 110. Is everybody back in their rooms? We're working on it. We're working on it. Okay. I'll wait till you're ready. Ready? I'm ready if you guys are ready. Okay. All right, everybody. Bobby Taruk is on and he is going to be the voice. We're just sharing um, some screens. So he's going to go over um, this Mindshare map and then we're going to kind of talk about what the different actions are that you complete with smart plans and i see a question came in the chat so let me open that really quick hang on i've got too many things running i can't see it i want to ask oh yeah it says please walk through how to filter tags bulk actions we'll be yeah we'll be working through that the second half of this class all right perfect i'm going to share my screen again and we'll let bobby get started Hey guys, good afternoon. My name is Bobby Tharoud. Myself and my wife, Joan, we're a team here in Glen Allen. So thank you for having us. I want to thank the technology committee for trusting us to be part of this event today. So I wanted to just touch a little bit on to supplement what Connor was talking about. So I want to go high level again. Again, the smart plans, a lot of the smart plans actually support an undergird, I don't know, you've, you'll hear a whole lot about the red book. It's actually the Emory book, which Gary Keller wrote, which is really the foundation of the KW culture. So a lot of the smart plans, again, you'll see that they actually support the red book. Number two is that Connor really spoke to this a whole lot. And it bears repeating again, that the smart plan is really device to automate our business. So I work in IT as well. I have a lot of IT background. A lot of work right now in software development actually is around automation. So we're really at the forefront as well with technology and what we're trying to do. The last thing I wanna make mention is really the smart plans are really are your guiding principles and North Star on what we do on a daily basis. So if you look at your landing page on command, it will populate right away all of your tasks. For example, if you have a quarterly call plan, all of your tasks are right there. So it's really, again, it's our guiding principle and what we do on a daily basis. So for smart plans, what Connor, I don't think Connor covered this a whole lot, but, uh, at least in anyone in here, are you guys in a team? I know you, you guys are the Gary team, but anyone else in a team in this room? Okay. So anyhow, we're in a team. If you ever grow your business and you form, a, a start with a small team and you go, as your business grows and you become a larger team, what right now is the smart plans are, they're decoupled for smart, what you can view for smart plans and also as a rainmaker. So there's a lot more around this, but just suffice to say that right now, the smart plans are not teamified, teamified as I got that term from Amy actually. So <clears throat> again, the smart plans really starts with your uh, database. Everything starts with a, our database and that's a very top of the mind map. Your database is really the foundation of what, how you build your smart plan. So you have a contact, you add a particular smart plan to your database. And then of course you can have more than one smart plan to your database. 
really the goal is, Connor spoke to this a whole lot, and I reminded that ultimately the goal of you know, the different touches that we have is really to have that face-to-face -face conversation. As an example, I may have a post on LinkedIn or, or Facebook for that matter. Wow, it had a thousand reactions. It had a whole lot of engagement. It doesn't really help me if Joan and myself are not able to make that appointment to have that conversation with the family that had been posting a whole lot on Facebook about moving to Tennessee. So actually that was, uh, I won't go into the detail about that missed opportunity. If you are able to take or have taken bold the quarterly call, if you look at it, that really supports the DTD4 concept of calling all of your database on a quarterly basis. So you'll find a lot of the smart plans as well, support the concepts of Bold. Has anyone attended Bold here? Bob, you, you have, and then, yeah, Margaret as well. So again, you'll see that a lot of the principles behind the smart plans actually all, all support all of the KW culture. You also find out that um, there's integration as well, and I'm li really looking forward to other automation integration. As an example, if you have, has anyone connected your account with Twilio for texting? Yep, okay. I'm really looking forward to other technologies like maybe slide dial, maybe in the future that would be integrated with our smart plan. That would be so amazing. Uh, Connor, talk a little bit about tagging. We'll Take a look at that. Shawana had a question and uh, we'll do a test drive on tagging. I know Dave, Dave just walked in. Dave uses this a whole lot. It's kind of covered right now, but think of when you do your neighborhood nurture or even the monthly drip, you'll see that on, from a contact level perspective, you'll see how that particular contact has taken a look at your neighborhood snapshots. And Dave, I know you do this a whole lot, but this is the most, I think one of the amazing parts of the smart plan when you have a neighborhood snapshot campaign, either a monthly or bi-weekly, there are trails in there and you can see where your contact has been looking at. And then that can be a point of conversation with your contact. Facebook campaigns, there's, I think there's a whole lot of smart plans as well around Facebook campaigns. Event leads, uh, Connor talked about um, hosting an event and then you can device your smart plan around that as well. Again, really the goal is to be able to go to have an appointment, lead to contracts that can lead to close units and your business becomes predictable with a GCI how much you're, you're progressing within the year, all the way to goals versus apples, and hopefully you get to how you've designed your life and have a life by design. And Bob, maybe you want to golf four hours a day, every day. And that is, is that what your goal is? Amy, do you want to do just a quick uh, test drive on the different components? So we'll tag team here because you're more of an expert as well. All right, you guys can all see the screen. Let me close the chat. Everybody can see, yeah, you can see my command screen. All right. I'm just going to, okay, so Connor showed us on the left-hand side, you guys see where the mouse is wiggling right there? That's smart plans. So that's where you're going to click to get started. And he showed us the library, but what if somebody wants to create one from scratch? Well, what functions do we have? What are all the different things we can do? So you're going to start with that smart plan option and then come up to the top right and hit create. And you guys are welcome to follow along for this on your own laptop. And we do have quite a bit of workshop time built in where we can walk around and help everybody as well. So I'm just going to hit create. I'm just going to call it command A. 
but you would obviously call it something to make you know what you're following up with, right? <laughs> and we're gonna hit apply. All right. And then Bobby, as you wanna talk about the different tasks, I can assign them in for you. I'm gonna be Vanna White. <laughs> Um, so I want to create the task as an example. So it may be my very first touch point. So I want to have it as a lower fidelity contact. So maybe I want to start with the text messaging. So this is an assumption that I have already integrated my account with Twilio. And then let's say as an example, maybe it's a new met as an example. So maybe I'll say, hi, uh, this is, um, Amy, you don't have to type this all in. Hi, this is Bobby Taruk from Keller Williams Springer Properties. Glenn Ellen, we met at such and such an event and just wanted to touch base with you. Uh, I appreciate your business. If there's anything I can do for your business to give you more customers or something like that, I'd be happy to do that. And this is my contact information. Maybe starting with a lower fidelity communication, that's how I would probably start it. And then after that, I would probably set a delay, maybe like five calendar days or seven calendar days, something like that. Then I would probably want to send an email as an example. And then I would say, something to the effect, hey, just wanted to touch base with you. you. Obviously you can set additional delays here, but, and then you can send another email. Uh, maybe you have an event sample and you will remind that person of that event. And then I would set another delay. And then probably let's say maybe 15 calendar days delay. And then I would probably create a task, something book an appointment if they're willing to go out with to coffee with you. And then you can repeat this process, maybe set a delay, set a lag time, and then <clears throat> repeat the process as an example. And you will probably vary the messaging of the text, but you can make it recurring. So does that make sense? Okay, so what I see here, I'm gonna scroll up to the top is we started with a text message. And this is this red part is what Bobby was talking about with Twilio. If you haven't set that up, you can just hit that subscribe in KW Marketplace. The plans start at like $3.40 a month for 300 text messages. So it's pretty affordable. And then you can put your text in here. And Bobby, do you can you explain what I did with these merge fields here? Yeah, so you can actually now the way Amy did this is that and this is best practice, by the way. She has a placeholder for the first contact name. Oh, I'm sorry. My name as an example, if I'm sending this out, my first agent name, and then we would put in our brokerage name. Before that, hi, the first contact name. And then you could also put a last name in there. And then normally I would love like to put in my brokerage name as well. And then the address of the brokerage. Oh, I could just put in Glen Allen and then put in the messaging. And then as a signature, you'll want to put in your KW app link to download and then your team name as well. So Amy, I love what how you did here. You also included the KW app download link and then the team name. Yeah, and basically what this is doing is making a customized text message to go out on behalf of you, yet it reads as though it's sending just to me, Amy, or just to Bobby. You know what I mean? It can go out to you know five different people at the same time, but they all get it with their name populated into it where it says contact first name. And then as Bobby was speaking about earlier with teams, where it says agent first name and agent last name, if you're on a team and you're using a team smart plan, well, you've 
have multiple people on the team. So how does the system know who it's coming from? How do the contacts know who it's coming from? Well, you just say agent first name and agent last name. If you're an individual agent, you can probably just program your own name in there. It's not as big of a deal, but on a team, you definitely want to use those features. So it doesn't always say it's coming from Patty Wardlow. <laughs> well, Amy, one thing to add really quick, because normally people, we, I, we, I get spam. And normally my name is not mentioned in the message. So I know it is spam, but here you personalize it. You put in your contact first name or even contact last name as well. They'll know it is something personalized. Highly likely they won't tag it as spam and they're, they'll actually read that particular message. So I don't know exactly. if you guys are seeing that value. And uh, in case anybody missed how to get those merge fields in there, it's just this little F on the side. When you click on that, there's a whole list of different things you can choose from. And then it'll just pop in and you'll know it's live when it turns blue. If it's black, it's static. If it's blue, it's a live merge field. And then what else did we do, Bobby? We put in a delay because we don't wanna send a text and an email in the same day, right? You wanted to send your email five days later. Yep. Now, can you talk to me about why you chose to do a text first? I want it to be a lower fidelity uh, richness of the touch point. So, I mean, it could go either way. We know that the younger generation, I just asked Joe's nephew, who's a millennial, I asked him, hey, what kind of communication do, do millennials really want nowadays? And he told me, we prefer texting. He didn't say WhatsApp, he didn't say Viber, he didn't say Messenger, he didn't say Instagram. He said, text me. So again, Taylor, how you communicate, contingent, being cognizant about the generation you're speaking to. Yeah, I know that text messages have about a 90% open rate within the first 10 minutes. Emails, you're lucky if you get 20% at all. So that's a good uh, stat to know, and that's a good reason to invest in Twilio as well. On Twilio, you won't get, if it's not integrated to your personal phone number. You can now choose a local Chicagoland area code. It used to be only around Texas or Dallas area code, but now you can choose Chicagoland area code. Yeah, and you can have the same, with... oh, go ahead. Yeah, you don't get to hung up that it will, it isn't your personal number. Your contact will know that it's you communicating and highly likely they'll think that it's a business number. Yes, exactly. And you'll you'll get the you'll use the same Twilio number every time. It's not a new phone number. So th that's a great point. What about when they respond to your text? Great question. <laughs> when they respond to you, it will come in as a notification in command and you can reply to them right through command. Uh, a lot of agents will tell, they'll respond to the initial text and say, hey, this is a number I sometimes use for business. I'm going to go ahead and give you my direct line. And then that will get them off of command and right into your cell phone. And they feel very special because you've given them your direct phone number now. <laughs> Correct. Yep. Yep. There was right, a question. Know, oh, what was that, Bobby? There was a question from Shawana's uh, MC. Oh, let me, I didn't see it. Did you catch it? Oh, here we go. I can see it. It says, is it possible to text a graphic? It is yet not through smart plans. So you can text individual images through a contact, not through the smart plans currently. All right, and then I know we're going a little over on this section. We just wanted to make sure that everybody knew what the different features were. Uh, one thing I wanna to just touch on lightly is Bobby had mentioned you can have the same text message go out or you can actually rotate through different messages right here at the top where it says message type. You can see it's selected on static. So if I wanted to offer three different messages that would rotate through for this first touch, I would just hit dynamic and it would let me add in multiple alternate text options. You can see I can just hit add more if I want to create more options. And then the delays will set up the delay so not everything goes at the same time, same day. <laughs> and <laughs> Jen says that could make you look like a psychopath if you do that too much. <laughs> uh, same thing with the emails. We can do simple email here where we just use the text and the, the um, 
the like bold italicized underline that type of stuff you can add colors and embed links or if you've already created an email inside the design templates you can actually pull one right in that has all of your images and everything embedded right in there so let's see what we have created and so i'm just going to select that hit got it hit save and now that fancy image written and you can put links and videos and stuff all right in there will be your email that goes out so there's times to use a simple text or your your ones with the graphics and everything we've got um, another question here amy as well yeah maria through if you're setting a text okay so the question was why wouldn't you just provide your own phone number when you're setting it up if you're going through twilio um you can't have an automated service through your phone number it has to be a separate phone number on there unfortunately um i did see some comments in the chat on what happens if somebody replies if they reply you get a notification and command and through kelly and if somebody calls that number um you would first have to set it up but in the settings section of command um you can set up call forwarding so if someone calls that number it would actually get routed to your cell phone um there's a cost per minute on there uh for your credits so i would just say hey let me call you right back in my personal line right but at least there's a way for them to to get connected to you yeah it's one credit per text and three credits per minute on twilio good question all right let's see what other features okay so creating a task would simply be a task reminder that would go to you so your client wouldn't get that you would get a reminder to do something make a call would be a reminder to make a phone call so like that quarterly call plan that we talked about it's the same type of idea you'll get a task reminder that says hey it's time to make a call and you can actually type your script or the topic of what you want to cover in that message so when you click on your task it, you don't have to think about what to say it's just going to tell you hey it's time to call joe kenny because we need to talk about command day you know whatever it is and then then it's prompted for you i'm a little late we're talking about the one in two months <laughs> uh, and then so we talked about emails text messages delays uh, we did talk about restarting the smart plan. So if it's an evergreen content, just meaning something that's always good to go that you want to just run over and over again, you could restart the plan. However, there is a button that says add to smart plan. So let's say I've run through this touch that we just set up today and I don't want to restart the plan. However, I don't want them to be disconnected from me. Maybe I want to add them onto my monthly neighborhood nurture so I can hit add smart plan and then I can see a list here of all oh i don't want to restart my plan there we go i can see a list here of all the smart plans that i have access to already and click whichever one i want and so here's the buyer education one that connor had set up maybe after my initial touch of introducing myself to them i want them on my buyer education plan and i can click that and now they'll receive that once the initial smart plan has run through and those are all the functionalities and you guys can easily remove steps you can move them up and down with these arrows and then you can save them here any questions before this is just about functionality so we just wanted you guys to be aware of what the different functions were and noel's gonna help us think through a smart plan and how to plan one out so do you guys have any more questions about the functionality at this point Let me see if anything came in the chat. I don't see any new chats. Oh, is there a timeline for when notifications will be added to the task feature? Can We've you say question. more about that? I was on mute. I, I think somebody from Aurora had a question that says, is there a timeline for the notifications will be added to the task feature? Can you talk more about that question? It's Michelle. So right now when we have a task, it shows up on our dashboard, but it doesn't like give us an actual ping in our inbox or anything like that, correct? That is correct. And 
I, as far as I know, Noel, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the the thinking behind that is we everybody should be logging into command every day to see, you know, command supposed to just tell you what what you do today. So as long as you're checking those tasks every morning, you'll have a, an idea of how to plan out your schedule for the day. So time block your lead gen time and smart plans will feed into tasks to tell you to make your call, to reach out and do this, to, you know, send an email, whatever it is that you set the task up to do, write a birthday card, something like that. And that's just part of your lead gen time for the day. Yeah, also through Kelly. So um, if you guys have a, a task in the in the beginning of the day, around nine or 10, it'll, it'll send you a notification saying you've got five tasks due today and four tasks overdue, right, that are past due. Um, they are working on a huge overhaul on notifications. So people can decide what do they want to be notified on and how do they want to be notified? Do you want to email? Do you want to push notification? Um, same thing when they incorporate that with uh, command mobile as well. So, so a huge overhaul coming. So there's a lot of neat things coming with that. We, we had another question here uh, too. Sanjay, what was it? Yeah, uh, it was basically Sure. So, so the question was, um, if you add a, a step to add the client to another smart plan uh, towards the bottom, like how does that enter that timeline really, you know, change? Well, if that's the last step on the time on the smart plan, then they just get put on the new smart plan and then that smart plan follows through. Then you can link that smart plan to another one. So a good example would be if somebody wanted to do a, a monthly newsletter, you can say, okay, here's quarter one for 90 days. And at the end of quarter one, I want to link this smart plan to quarter two and then quarter three, right? So you can keep linking them together. But in the same sense, you can have it where maybe the add to smart plan is in the middle of your smart plan. Maybe it's add a bi-weekly neighborhood nurtures in the middle. And then you can have steps after that to say, well, now delay it seven days and now do the next task or the next email. Maybe the email is, hey, I'm just checking in. Did you receive the other email that I sent you about values in your neighborhood? Right. So it can go both ways. No, it so it won't go when that smart plan ends, the smart plan that was added as a step, it won't go back to the other smart plan unless you had other steps in there that it would continue to carry out. If that makes sense. Cool. Any other questions? Anyone here? Yep, Jeff? Something like a um, neighborhood nurture is, uh, that, that continues on basically forever. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody wants to unsubscribe, would that, auto, you know, the, when they click on unsubscribe, do we get a notification and does it automatically unsubscribe them? Yeah, um, the, so the question was if somebody unsubscribed from a smart plan, let's say the biweekly neighborhood nurture, um, as of now, we don't get a notification saying that. Um, they, are, they are coming out with metrics for emails that we can see who's opened these emails, if any bounced, if anyone unsubscribed, things like that. So those analytics are coming very, very soon. Um, but what was the other part of your question? It's, it's when, when they unsubscribe. Oh, yes. Man does that. We don't have to do Correct. That. So when they unsubscribe, here's one thing to know. If someone unsubscribes from that smart plan, it's only unsubscribing them from that one smart plan. So if you put them on another smart plan, that's a completely different smart plan ID and things like that. They are working on also giving consumers the option to say, I just want to opt out from this smart plan or all communication from Keller Williams or just specifically from this agent. Thanks. Yeah. Marcus? B. Yeah, so the question was, um, when you are creating a custom smart plan, you have the little check mark on the bottom of like each step to save that text and stuff like that. You don't have to go in after you do one step and constantly check that box. You can just build out all your steps and then um, do it. Yeah. But if you're on a laptop, sometimes you can swipe with two fingers to the side on the trackpad and then it goes back and then you lose everything that's on there too. So, so yeah, Thank you. sure. Um, any other questions? Yeah, Anyone on zoom? Yeah. Um, Noel, this is Sandra. Hey, Sandra. I don't know if you can hear me well, but, um, 
So my command email was set up to a personal email and the uh, email is defaulting to that personal. And it says you can go into settings and change it so that I could put it to my kw.com email. Correct. Yep, and I'll show you that really quick here. So if you go into settings, all the way at the bottom, you have command email. So if you click on manage, you can choose what that reply to email is. So you can set that up to be whatever you'd like. Okay, and then you can upgrade your subscription. You get 5,000 emails free a month, but if you wanted to, if you needed to do 10,000 or you're really scaling your business up, you can increase the, the subscription plan that you have. Does that help, Sandra? Yeah, what is the subscription for the email? Like, are you looking to do more than 5,000 emails? Okay, so that's what we get. You get 5,000 per month free. But as you can see, depending on how much you need, um, these are the different plans here, which they, they're a little bit out of order. So if you need 10,000, it's 9.99 a month, right? 30,000 is 39.99, right? So it, it continues to go up here depending on how much emails you're, you're actually sending per month. I don't think most people are sending uh, a ton of emails like that though. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see, we got a question in the chat. Um, so James says, I have a, a newsletter smart plan that I update with a new design every month. If somebody unsubscribes and I change the design next month, does that person who unsubscribed last month get the new email or is it considered the same smart plan ID? Uh, yeah, correct. If they unsubscribe from that smart plan, um, they will not get that next email that you send out for the following month, right? They're going to be completely unsubscribed from that smart plan itself. Cool. Oh, and I see Amy answered it. So thanks. Cool. Um, so I'm going to jump in now. And if there's any questions, feel free to ask, um, you know, jump in and ask. But uh, I'm going to jump into really... Um, talk about planning the smart plans. Now, there's all sorts of use cases for smart plans, right? You can do them for following up with leads, nurturing leads. You can do them for um, buyer education, like like Connor had, right? Or what next steps may be. Um, you can you could even do them to remind yourselves for stuff. So it doesn't have to get sent out to a client. And that's something that our team is now implementing, where we're creating, we're starting to get. Um, a lot of clients where it's hard to manage them. And we want to show that we're working for them and we're looking up properties on the private network on for sale by owners, like anything like that, just to check in with them. So every time we have a client, we're, we're going to now start adding them onto the smart plan that reminds us every other day to touch base with that client and just say, hey, I've been searching the market, nothing new, right? Or here's a for sale by owner, or whatever the case is. Um, that way we get those constant reminders and we can keep up with the level of service that we want to deliver as well. Right. But at the end, what you want to start doing is you want to try to plan out what the goal is. Right. Is it to establish contact? Is it to nurture, follow up, set reminders? Right. Once you have the goal in mind, then we can start planning out what that smart plan is. Think about the audience that you're trying to target. Are, are these people that you've met already or are they non-mets? Are they completely cold leads that you've that you've you've never uh, heard of? Um, also think about timeframes, right? Is this more of a short-term, mid-term, or long-term? Uh, we're doing that with our nurtures too, right? So when we talk to somebody and they say they're looking to buy in um, the next 12 months, cool, then we know to put them on maybe more of a mid-term nurture. If they say they're ready right now, they're going to put on a short-term nurture and we're going to start educating them with those, the buyer education. Uh, if they say more than a year, then we want something long-term, right? So that determines how when they were talking about creating these different steps, uh, the delays, well, our delays uh, really depends on how long that nurture is. If it's a short-term nurture for somebody, then I'm only delaying one day. And I'll let them know, hey, for the next two weeks, I'm gonna send you an, uh, uh, an email each day that's gonna go over something new in the buying process or the selling process, right? If it's somebody that's more midterm, maybe I'll do every two weeks. Right. Or if it's somebody long term, then maybe I'll drip on them once a month for the next year or two years, you know, after that. Um, so think about the time frame and then you can start laying out 
kind of the overall structure, right? So if it's lead follow-up, right, you can start planning, okay, how many days do you want this to go to for? Um, a lot of people do what's called an eight by eight. It's like eight touches over eight weeks. Um, and in this example, this is a text only plan, but you can mix it up however you'd like. The same day you can send them a text message and an email the same day and then delay it, right? And then set a delay for the next day to follow up via phone call or send a text message, right? So you can really get creative, I think, depending on um, um, your comfortability as well. Now, we should be calling, texting, email. We should be doing all of them really to reach out to people, but I get it, right? Especially as new, newer agents that come in, if you're terrified of the phone and you feel more comfortable texting, cool, like do something. Don't let the fear of being on the phones prevent you from doing anything. Even if it's just a dripping email, it's better than nothing, right? So think about what that communication looks like. Obviously a phone call is the most effective if you can actually connect with somebody. Um, and then again, you just set your delays and you think through what those touches look like. So in this example, it's more of a lead follow-up if we got a lead on Facebook from an open house ad or something like that, right? So in our initial uh, question, I'm sorry, uh, text or email we sent out, we're trying to ask a question. Instead of just saying, hey, you know, clicked on our ad, nice to meet you, reach out if you have any questions. We're asking them the question, right? Is the house you clicked on, right, in Naperville, is this the only area you're looking for or surrounding areas, right? We want to try to get them to maybe respond and say, yeah, well, I'm open to these other areas as well. Um, you know, and then it delays it a day and then it says, hey, you know, I want to send you up a revised list of homes for sale, um, you know, in this neighborhood, right? Let me know if there's anything we can do or if there's any changes that you would like to make. Um, and typically this is running if we're not getting any responses. So after a couple messages, people start feeling uncomfortable, like, well, I don't want to keep spamming someone if they're not replying. But um, like we have that in here too, right? It's like, hey, I hope I'm not being a pest, right? <laughs> but what are your thoughts, good or bad on, on, on the homes that we're sending out to you, right? And then, right, the fourth text is, you know, I don't want to spam you at homes you don't like. I just want to make sure you're being taken care of. Are there any must-haves? So we're just constantly trying to create some type of engagement. And sometimes they won't respond for four or five messages. And then message six or seven, they, we get a response. And we're like, amazing. Or I've had them halfway through reach out and say, can you actually call me? Can you give me a call again so I can really explain what we're looking for? I'm like, bingo, that's it, right? So that's, that's, that's perfect. Um, but all of these touches are really geared towards providing some type of value or asking questions to bring engagement, right? This other one states, you know, I don't know if you've had the, uh, if you've selected who had the privilege of being your agent, but there's an article here that is, is a link. And that goes over, uh, it's a website that just talks about, here's what you should be looking for in an agent, right? So you're providing value, right? And then the next text talks about, uh, Keller Mortgage, right? Hey, did you know the houses that you're looking for may qualify for a thousand dollar closing credit and no no lender fees? If they're not responding to you for five or six messages, that might pique their interest to say, "Wow, I can save some money." Sure, I'd like to learn more about that. Um, so that's what that looks like. This is um, just kind of a little uh, snippet of you know the home buying education smart plan that Connor developed that our team uses as well. But this is how we start planning it out too, right? Um, like we start thinking about what does our short-term plan look like, right? And then that might look like it'll be one day in between, right? If somebody, if we have a buyer consultation and we go over stuff and then we're going to drip on them and provide additional content over the, you know, the next eight weeks. Um, but depending on what that goal looks like, that's how you'll develop these smart plans. And like Connor said, and, and, and I think Bobby said too, or, and Amy reiterated that it doesn't have to be a year long plan. It doesn't have to be this humongous project. Create a small one that has a couple steps. And then if you have an idea on how to expand that, great, create part two. And then at the end of plan one, go and edit it and then link that one to plan two. So then it'll go from plan one to plan two automatically by itself, right? But um, that's how you wanna think through uh, really planning it. Um, I tell agents all the time that wanna, run Facebook ads to generate leads, or it's really anything that you do. If you're doing open houses, if you're doing Facebook ads, you should have a follow-up system in place before you go and start doing those. If not, you're going to be spinning your reels. Don't wait until leads start coming in. And then you're like, oh, what do I do? And I, oh, I called them. I didn't get an answer. And then there's no consistent follow-up afterwards. 
Are yes. You tagging in some of your um, tags are you tagging them and this is the buy ISA buyer registration smart plan for them? Are you tagging them as well? Um with ours we tag them as buyers. Okay. So you, so yeah, you whatever guys repeat the, the question. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Um the question was are we tagging our clients or our contacts with like buyer education smart plan or whatever that is. Yeah. Right. And um we're we're tagging ours as buyers. And anyone that's under buyer should be put on the buyer education smart plan. Now you could automate that, which Connor talked about before. I could go into that smart plan and say, anytime I tag somebody buyer, I want you to automatically put them on the smart plan. That's what I was trying to do both together. Yes. For sure. Yep. And um, what what's exciting is they're they're working. It should be coming out really soon. Is when you create a Facebook ad through command, you'll be able to say, "I want it to automatically add these tags, and I want it to automatically add um, this person to um, this particular smart plan." So that's that's truly automation, right? On that. Um, same thing with um, like our our triggers right now we have the triggers on task i'm um, sorry on tags but they're working on making it where if you move somebody from active to under contract it can kick off a smart plan just by dragging them to that next field or when they close on a property you move them to that category and it's going to automatically kick off that smart plan that you have set up for them so that's awesome right we um, had a couple people wondering if we could just walk through um that brainstorming process as a group real quick. Um, not necessarily what all the content is, but like how to decide what do I want first, text or email? How many days of a delay do I want? Is that something that would interest everybody on here? I know we had some questions here about that, getting lots of nods and downers. Um, I'm happy to screen share or Noel, if you wanna just add one to the screen you had up, that would be fine too. And then Joe and I will show how to take it from outline into smart plan. So let's see. All right. So, so do we want to do um, the post closing or do we want to do a different topic since our contest is the post closing? Well, I, I think we can go into really planning the outline, right? That's what we talked about planning the outline. And then we can get into that can be part of the contest. And then we can do the workshop and, and actually get hands on with creating them ourselves. Perfect. What do you think? Sounds cool. awesome. So we're gonna, uh, okay, so let's, let's do this. So, so we're gonna build a, an outline, right? And the contest that we're doing today is really gonna be focused on uh, a post-closing smart plan, right? Like whenever you close uh, with a client, what are the steps you take afterwards to follow up, to continue to nurture, to provide additional value. Like, what does that look like? So that way you don't just say, congratulations, and, uh, you know, they never hear from you again, right? So, um, again, there's all sorts of things that we can do. I, I have my own um, post-closing smart plan that I do, so I won't, uh, you know, ruin it, especially since we have a contest. But, Amy, I, Amy, I don't know if you want to take over maybe the brainstorming, and I can type some of this up here as well. I think this is where, yeah, I think this is where we should crowdsource. So, okay, keeping that in mind, you guys, we're all going to be doing a contest to create a post-closing smart plan. We want you guys all to be able to put this into action when you leave today. So the next time you have a closing, you can add your person to this smart plan. So we thought it would be a good activity to have everybody kind of start together with some of the main points you want to make, not necessarily the content, but like I want to send an email. I want to send a text message. We can come up with content ideas that we don't need to write a script at this point. That's the part where the contest comes into play. So Noel, do you want me to screen share or do you want to type up what's best? Um, yeah, why, why don't, I think you're, uh, you're probably more well-versed. Uh, All right, let better me create some of that. share my screen. I gotta find the button. There it is. So like I said, very simply, we're just going to walk through the ideas of the different steps we want to create. So this is where people are going to want to unmute. You're going to want to get the mic from the person in your market center to continue talking. 
um, so that we can all hear and, and kind of do this as a collaboration. And since I'm screen sharing, if somebody at one of the other market centers could monitor the chat, that'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> so what is, oh, let me turn my camera on. You guys are just looking at a black screen, aren't you? There we go. Hi. Uh, <laughs> what is the first thing you would want to do once closing happens to follow up with your clients? Congratulate them. Congratulate them is what one person okay. said. Okay. So, how do we want to congratulate them? Text, email, call? Phone call. Phone call. Okay. So, we want a phone call. Oh, I'm not typing. That would be helpful. Can you guys hear me? If so I have we're getting text over here. We're getting phone calls. So, but this is a this is a perfect example though, where I think that everyone's can be a little different depending on how you want to run your business. Someone may want to call and someone may prefer to text so you can create that customization, which is awesome. Okay, so after you call or text, depending on what you decide, what's next? You sound a bit low, Amy. Hang on. There we go. closing gift. Here, I got it. Can you guys hear me? Okay, much better. Yay, lapel mic. <laughs> Joe was just gonna hold the mic for me. <laughs> okay, so after you call, you, you do the congratulations step, what's next? Yep, we got in the comments a survey link. Survey link, I love that. So is that an email, a text, something else? So I'm guessing... Like a testimonial capture, is that what the survey link is? Yeah, that's what I would assume. Okay, so we'll just say that's an email for our purposes today. What else do we have after that? Um, we've, we've got one uh, here asking about moving day. So if, if there's anything we can do to help or if there's any issues. Okay. And what type of contact is that? A text message is what we have here. Okay. Anything after that? I think there's a, I think there's a ton of just different ideas we can have. So I, I think this is where, um, they make it custom to your own. Yeah. Your own I think business, I, right? I'm really interested to see what everyone comes in, up with, with, who participates in the contest. Um, just to see the variety of the different options that we can, you know, utilize as well. And, the other thing that we don't have too is, is the, the, the days in between, like what are the delays between these steps? I was just gonna say that right now, all of this is happening at the same time. Right. <laughs> so maybe we want, you know, a one day delay. Then we want, I don't know, a three day delay. Another one day delay. Yeah, right? so this, yeah, so this is a good way to like, as you can see, you're just kind of brain, you're doing a roadmap here. And once you kind of have it planned out to say, okay, I know kind of what I want the outline to look like, then you can go into command or, I mean, you could do it right through command, right? But the point is to kind of plan it out and try to think of it more of an outline and then fill in the content on what exactly do I want to say for the link, for the testimony, right? Brad, you got a question? Yeah, so if you've been communicating your consistent schedule process through your regular phone number, texting and back and forth and stuff. And then some of your stuff with SmartShine, are they get now gonna get that, you know, uh, one of those other um, yeah. accounts? And then you're gonna have, they're gonna be really replying back to that. You'll have to go into command to see it. And then you have to, then how do you reply back sure. to that kind of conversation? So the question was, if we have email, uh, text message steps in here, the concern is if we're communicating with them through our regular cell phone, and then we put them on the smart plan and now it's coming from your Twilio number and it's the replies go to your command and it's, it's a little bit different. So 
um, you don't have to set it up like really with, with our um, text processes, it could just be a task. Like me personally, I don't like using Twilio for my sphere, the people that I know. For me, that's for cold leads that I've never met before. They don't know my number's different. I don't have to explain or, or go through that process, right? But if I have this as a smart plan to create a task to send a text message for this, I could just copy and paste a text message and send it out from there as well. But good question though, because then they would get it from two different numbers and be like, wait, who's this, right? Yep, so we have this task touch, create task. Instead and, and, Mich of and to Michelle's question about how about a pop by as a thank you gift, um, was is that part? Of, uh, Michelle, I don't know if that's part of the steps. Oh yeah, for the post closing, sure. Post closing, it was just an idea that you could have a task for to do a pop, arrange a pop by or send a gift or something. Yep, absolutely. Perfect. All right, so now, now that we have the start of an outline, I think you guys are kind of understanding how to think through this process. So now that we have the start of this, once we have it on our document laid out, how do we get it into the smart plan, right? Is that the next step that everybody's wondering? Can't see the chat. There we go, I see the chat now. So I think um, Joe and I are gonna tag team this one and he's gonna kind of talk through, now that we have our outline, what do we do to get it into command? We're gonna wait. Yeah, we're quite a team here you've got running. So you can see on the screen what our, our list is. So Joe, when you're creating a system to follow up with people after closing, would you want to do a phone call or a text message for a first step? First step, I'm, I'm doing a phone call. It's a, it's a touch. Text Perfect. Message, text message seems a little cold. So I've started my smart plan. You guys can see it's totally from scratch here. And I'm just going to hit make a call. And Joe, what is our reminder? When, I, when this pops up in your task list, what do you want it to say to trigger you to make this call so you know who you're calling and what you're talking about? Simple closing closing day. Closing day. And It'll then be, I'm going to use my merge field and say contact first name, contact last name, and let me ask let me ask a question. Yeah. So we're always just giving our buyers closing gifts. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have that closing gift is the first step? So we ha we have that we have that in place at the title company on the on the day of post. We could. So the plan that we just set up has the gift as step five, but you can easily make that step one if you want. Because typically you're getting that closing gift at the, at at the, the table. At, at the table. So let's move this guy up. So does that mean that's now your step one? Or is the phone call still your step one? I'd say the closing gift step one and phone call step two. Okay. So we got a, we got a quick comment on that, Amy. One, one yeah, second. Go. go for it. Over the years I've learned that sure well remember this yeah. is not about this is not about how we're going to do it this is about just you know getting a, a, a smart plan together too so yeah you know, yeah for sure yeah the yeah. comment was just you know um just on uh maybe not giving it right up front it could get law they got a lot going on as well but following up um i used to do them at the closing table and now i do them maybe a week later it's a good time to pop by at the house and just kind of deliver something so yeah i think there's there's another example of the preference on what an agent may want to do right okay we're just going to go with what we came up as a team then so first step is a call to congratulate right so our task reminder is going to say closing day and then it's to say so you're the agent and i'm the closing i'm the person that's closing so your task reminder is going to say closing day amy stack and then my phone number and then if you want What's maybe a message you would want to say during that phone call? Hey, Amy, thank you for so much for allowing me to help you find your new home. Please remember, this is not the end of our relationship. I will be here for you with anything that you may need going forward with your house. 
or something along those lines. Yeah, perfect. How's that, Naperville? Is that one good? <laughs> Oh, so, type it right. so then when your task comes up, it'll say closing day, contact name and phone number. And when you click on the task, then it's going to have that little script that you've written for yourself to prompt you on what to say. So you don't, you no longer have to figure out what to say to them. It's right there written out for you. So then what was our next step? We wanted to do a delay. So how many days of a delay should we do between our phone call of congratulations and our email? Well, it, sound, it sounded like from what the, the other officers were saying, so maybe seven days, this week gives you time to, to you know, bring, that, bring that gift over. Well, so our next step was an email with a testimony. So do you wanna wait seven days before you ask for the testimony? Uh, about three. Three days, okay. So then we're gonna set up our delay for three days and then our next step is an email. So we just click send email and that's gonna pop right into the next step of the plan. And any thoughts on what we wanna title that email? It doesn't have to be perfect. How'd I do? I, I, you beat me to it. Ah, we great, read, great, I read your great, mind. Great mind Channel do. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is your ask for testimony. You would actually put your full message in there, but we're just doing this to show you guys how that would work. And if you had one of those ones from designs that you'd already created, you would just hit that designs button like we talked about earlier and pull in the design you've already made. So our next step after the testimony was another delay before asking about a moving date. So how many days do you wanna delay after the testimony? What do you think? Another three? Another three days. Oops, I got click happy, you guys. I made it five days. And then our, our step was to do a, ta a text task, not an automated text, because like you guys mentioned, maybe you want it to come from your actual cell phone number, not your Twilio number. So instead of using this send SMS message, we're going to do create a task which was follow-up text ask about moving date so so i'm going to say i want to text my contact first name my contact last name i'm going to put their phone number in there so i don't have to go look it up contact phone number and what does that text look like hey are you all moved in how'd it go Insert emoji. Like that? Look at you. Yeah, and the little, little truck. Oh, and the little truck. Are you guys impressed that I have a hot key on my keyboard for a an emoji keyboard? <laughs> And Meredith, that was a great point that you can actually put your uh, emojis right in here. So obviously right now I'm using this in the description. However, you can put those emojis right inside a, an SMS text that you're sending out as well. So there's our text to ask about moving. And then we said we wanted a one day delay before we send a personal note. So I'm just gonna hit delay. That's one day. And now a personal note. Unfortunately, command can't send that out for you. <laughs> so we're gonna hit create task. And Joe, what do we want our personal note to say? I think kind of like along the same lines as, as the telephone call. I can't thank you. I can't thank you. Can't thank you enough for your business. And, and I think this is the part now because you've already made three or four touches that week that you can you know ask for a referral on that point. And that's it. Did smart plans just get a lot less scary? No, everybody's being quiet. <laughs> so once, once you run this smart plan, there's one in the library called a home anniversary smart plan. So, and it's already written for you. So I don't know if I have it in my library yet, but let's check out, check that out. So once I've finished this, we send our handwritten note. I don't want to forget about that client. I want to say, 
in contact with them right over the next year and I want to celebrate their anniversary with them so if I hit add to smart plans and let's see if I have the anniversary list uh, plan in here I don't okay so I, you would have to pre download it to your library and then it would show up in this list here. And because I don't have that, we'll see if I have a birthday one. There. Yeah. Pretend my birthday says happy anniversary. So now I've dropped them on the anniversary list. So now they're gonna, you will get the reminder saying, hey, it's time to reach out and wish them, you know, a happy anniversary. Send a card, give them a call, whatever that plan looks like. So you know what I was thinking, you know, two a week or so ago. You know, we're about five months away from Thanksgiving, and everybody typically gives out their their Popeye or their their pies parties at Thanksgiving. What a great way to, you know, to promote that is put a smart plan in place where you can put save the days and you can have a few more touches as opposed to just sending out the invite for the, um, the party to come out and get your pie. So you can build a smart plan with that, put a handful of steps in there, and then that, there's more touches there. Just a thought. Yeah, I think there is a pie day smart plan for people that do pies. I think there's one already in the library. I think you're right. See, I didn't look in the I didn't look in the library this week, so I'm guilty, guilty, <laughs> guilty, guilty as charge, Your Honor. Thank you. <laughs> All right, do you guys have any other? Yeah, oh, go ahead. Joe, um, Joe reminded made me think of something. So let's say you close with them in February. You do your six months or whatever, but Christmas comes around and you want to send them maybe a Christmas ornament, you know, first Christmas, something like that, right? Can Right now, are our delays only based on days, or can we set up, send this task like on the 24th, or on the, can we set a specific date for a task? Great question. Currently, the only two smart plans that are date triggered are the anniversary smart plan and the birthday smart plan that were created by International. That is something that's slated to come out down the line. It is a plan to be able to create our own date triggers. Right now, it's just the two that International created. There's a lot more programming that goes into it. So those ones are linked to the date that you enter into the contact card. It's not linked to a date that says, I want it to run on this day. Did that help answer the question? Yeah, that's okay. coming soon. Um, there is a bit of a workaround with that, though, yeah. which is awesome. Um, if you have the smart plan created, you know, you can go in and post date when you, you're going to add somebody to that smart plan. So maybe if it's for the holidays, although we, we can't set it up in the smart plan to trigger off on that day. If we go and add people, we can say when they're going to be added to that smart plan. So like you're going to set up a task reminder. Is that what you're saying? No, like if you go into your contacts and um let's see i can share my screen here and show you um let's see so if i go if i have a smart plan already set up for thanksgiving or christmas and i know i want it to be sent out either in advance or whatever that looks like maybe a week before christmas i can go in here and say great here's the people that i'm going to send the smart plan to and when i go in here and click add a smart plan well, uh, let's say it's this one here right I can then choose which day I want to start that smart plan on, right? So I can say, well, this is for Thanksgiving. So we're going to, you know, do the 25th on here. And then I would confirm and then they would be added on here. So as long as my first step was to send out an email or to make a phone, whatever that is, this will start specifically on that date. Okay, got it. Cool. All right, Amy, you want to talk about the contest a little more and we can... Uh, well, I thought there was one other thing we should show before we launch sure. into the contest because smart plans aren't very helpful if you can't put anybody on them. <laughs> so let's talk about how to add people. I'm going to share my screen real quick. And just like Connor was saying that there's, you know, three different ways to do the same thing. So we are still in the smart plan that we, that Joe and I just pulled up for you guys. And let's say we're ready to go. This is the plan I want to send out. The first thing you want to do is hit save up in that top right hand corner. And then right from this screen, we can actually hit the plus sign. Do you guys see that next to save just to the left of the save button? So you can hit that little add a person button. And this is where we can search by name. 
and I can look for all the Amy's in my database, or I can go search by tag. I don't, I'm just in a sample database. I'm not really sure. Maybe this is, no. Oh, here, I know what's in here. So everybody with this tag just popped up and only with this tag. So I can bulk add, I can hit select all like this and hit add to smart plan. And then I get that page that Noel was just showing us. So we can either choose to start all now, we can start on our following date and pick the specific date just like Noel showed us, or we can stagger. So this is something that Connor had brought up. Let's say you are adding you know, a large group of people to a smart plan and you've got tasks that are manual tasks for you to um, you know, make a phone call, send a text message by hand instead of through Twilio. You don't necessarily wanna send that to 50 people on one day because, well, first of all, are you gonna make 50 phone calls in one day? Probably not, I mean, maybe got to be really intent on, <laughs> on following through with your plan. Uh, however, even if you're doing something like an email or a text message, if you're flooding that out to your whole database at one time, can you keep up with the responses? Not necessarily 100% of people will respond at the same time, but even if you get 50 responses from you know, sending it to 500 people, do you have the time to sit down and respond to them each individually? So that's where the stagger comes into play is I can say, I want you know, 20 people to get this call or, oh, something's going on with my computer here. Oh, I see something coming in the chat. I was just answering a question. Oh, so I can say, oh, there, it caught up to me. So I can use the up down arrows. We can type in there exactly what we want. It's being slow on Zoom here, but that's okay. So you can say I want 10 contacts to go out a day or to receive this smart plan a day, you know, just up it to however many um, you want. I only have 20 selected, so it's only letting me do 20. If you had 500 selected, you could technically go up to 500, but then what's the point of staggering it? <laughs> so that's what the stagger is. And then you would just hit confirm and that would add them all to the smart plan. So that's one way you can add them um, right through the smart plan. I'm going to hit save. Another way is on your smart plan screen. So you don't even have to open the smart plan. Here's that command day one we were making. You'll see that same button right here on the far right under actions. And I get that same screen. So I don't have to open the plan once, it, once it's built. And then Connor mentioned one other way, which is through the contact card. So if you're not sending it to a bunch of people at the same time and you're sending it to one person specifically, which is probably how you're gonna do a closing plan, right? is click on your contact. Then you would uh, find the person you wanna send it to. So we're gonna send it to me. And I've opened my contact card. And on the right-hand side, you'll actually see there's a button that says Smart Plans. So I can tap Smart Plans, hit Add to Smart Plan, and here's the list of all of my plans. So I can, I can add them to a bunch of smart plans at the same day if I want to. But if I know I just want to go with this one, I'm just going to hit select. And then I have the start now or start it on the following date options again. So that's three different ways you can add people to smart plans. Ta-da! I think that's all I got for you, unless we've um, got questions. Yeah, we got a question. Like, what time of the day do the emails get sent out as well? Um, we can't choose really what time of the day. It just, just depends how busy their servers are. Um, I know it's during like normal business hours is when they'll send that out. Um, same thing with text messages as well. Yeah, it's kind of our time. It's, I don't know exactly, but somewhere like 10 to three, because you got to remember that these smart plans are running for people all over the country. So 10 a.m. here could be way earlier, or way later in another part of the country even though it seems like a normal time for us. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions before we bring Michelle on to talk about the contest? I'm sorry, I had to sing it like Oprah. You get a smart plan and you get a smart plan. <laughs> I don't see any we've, other we've questions. Got, we've got one more question over here too, Amy. But, go ahead, Ralph. Uh, I know we showed Is there a way that we can set up like a 
reminded reminder to email or text message or train that you start to uh, do that day or sure yeah so the, the question was you know we know that we should be logging in every day to command you know but is there a way to set up to get notifications like text message or email or things like that when those tasks are due um you get them through if you download the kelly app k-e-l-l-e -L -L -E, that will give you push notifications on there um it is very it, it is limited on the type of notifications though but that's what they're working on as far as email notifications right an entire notification system that we can customize what that what that looks like okay cool all right um, there's a, a good question that came in the chat darlene said she recently set up a mother's day smart plan and she was assuming it was going to run every year but that doesn't seem to be the case so now i need to revisit the smart plan every year correct and darlene that is right you've done the work to set up the smart plan so that's fantastic uh, maybe you make a step at the end of it a task reminder um or you set up a ta i guess that wouldn't work you set up a task reminder to remind yourself like just an individual task not through a smart plan to remind yourself to go check in on that smart plan that way you can update the graphic if you want update your list i know you used a tag like you have a tag of mothers um so if you need to add people to that or or there's people that you don't want in your database anymore you can make sure that they're not in there although i don't think you'd ever want to take somebody off of a mother's day trip <laughs> uh, but maybe you have new ones you want to add on so that will give you the opportunity to update your content so it's not exactly the same message that's going out maybe make a nice pretty little picture and make sure you have all the new moms that you've been talking to um, added to that smart plan you don't have to start from scratch though so i hope that answers your question and yeah, plus, uh, plus what mother's day you know it, it is a different day every single year it's not correct. like christmas day it's the 25th of the of december right uh, that day may change every year so that would be much more difficult to try to set uh repeating every year so i would just recommend plan it ahead of time go in there change up the message a little bit like amy said and then post date it when you're gonna have it triggered to actually be on Mother's Day or the day before, whatever that might be. Yeah, yeah. And I know Darlene, she did something kind of fun where she sent out a text a couple of days before wishing like a happy Mother's Day weekend versus something the day of when you know they're trying to spend time with their with their family. Yeah. So and it's getting lost in all the other people sending Mother's Day stuff, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was a great idea, Darlene. We got one more. Mark, go ahead, Marcus. Comment. That's true. That's true. So, so Mark, Marcus said we, we, we could have used Father's Day as an example, you know, because it is this Sunday, you know, all the talks about Mother's Day, but you know, us, us dads over here. <laughs> so yeah, Maria. Um, the question was, are we able to insert like an email signature that mirrors like our real email in those smart plans? Well, you can't do it with a simple style email, right? Because that's just text. But if you create a design and you put the, the picture of your email signature on the bottom, then you can certainly do that and have it look consistent with your email signature. Cool. All right. All who's right. up next? Michelle? Yeah, I think we're going to have Michelle announce the contest. Hi everybody, so we're going to have a contest and one thing I forgot, um, team, did we say it had to be done today? Like you have to submit and publish today or publish Friday? I think we said today. Today, okay. The, contest yeah. due by four o'clock. Today by four o'clock, um, we'll be picking a winner by Friday. So, okay. so the idea is that um, because we want everybody to get into action right now, you have all the tools to create a post closing um, smart plan. We want you to create that smart plan and publish that smart plan. Um, and if you do that by four o'clock, then you'll be entered to win a gift card. Correct, you guys? Correct. Okay. $50. I <laughs> the question was how much is the gift card? $50. <laughs> to amazon amazon. amazon gift card so so there's there's one for each 
uh, in-person market center and then one out of the Zoom group, right? That's what we decided? Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's four physical locations and one out of the Zoom. And what we're going to do is have you add your MCTTs to the smart plan so that we know you actually did it. So uh, Noel was gracious enough to create a Google form and I just put it in the chat. Let me go ahead and pull it up. I'll share my screen in just a second so you guys can see it. And I'll let Michelle talk through it. Yeah, here's our form. Yeah, so just provide your name, market center, email address, and pick your MCTT. Um, and then name of your smart plan, and then hit submit because that's how we'll find it in the library. We know the name of it. Oh, and then I guess that's one thing we didn't share, which would be helpful. Okay, missing piece, you guys, missing piece time. Once you have your smart plan ready to go, I'm just gonna open up that one we were testing. Open, okay, oops, I didn't mean to hit that button. I'm sorry, I got click happy. Okay, once you have your smart plan ready to go, under actions on the far right side, you can click those three little dots and hit publish to library. So then you'll have the opportunity to name your smart plan and provide a little description. And this is gonna make it public to the rest of Keller Williams. And then it will let us go ahead and review it and see uh, who we think made the best one from each location. What do you think? And then we were going to submit over B2B, right? So yeah, that was the, the question we got here is what's the criteria? What are we judging it on? Let me stop sharing the screen. Did you hear that, Michelle? Uh-uh. Oh, the question is what's the criteria for the smart plan? What how are we picking the winner? Um one, if you submit one. <laughs> That's half the battle. <laughs> um, put some thought into it. Um, creativity and try not to copy somebody else's. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember what we said about the criteria. A vote. So I, I don't think there has to be a specific number of steps or we, we thought about making a minimum requirements but at the end of the day the voting will will dictate right what the majority states is we think this is the best smart plan on here and we're just going to go off of off of votes for there yeah where it's going to be the tech chairs and the mcttt's are going to vote we're going to get together and so i'm not the only one picking for downers we're all going to do it together okay but yes you need to Name your plan, publish your plan, and add your market center tech trainer to your plan so we can see it run and know that you actually did it. Amy, Sound good? It, aren't we also going to pick an E2P winner that was going to go to the region? Yes. So after there's going to be five winners, one for each physical location and one for Zoom. From the five, we will also pick a winner from that and submit it to our regional tech trainer, Mike Hillary, and we're going to ask him to push it to get it featured for all of Keller Williams. So when you log into the Smart Plans library, you'll notice that there's some that are listed as featured Smart Plans. So we're going to see if he can get it pushed up there for us. We've got 38 people on Zoom, and you know we've got I think over 20 people here in Naperville, all the other market centers. If we all do a post-closing smart bank, look at the data we're going to have on options to choose from that we can then fully customize. So I think it's going to be um, a great activity that we can do today that we can really walk away with something that, and maybe it's not the smart plan you created, but maybe you can piecemeal a couple of ideas that other people had. So think about what your ideal follow-up process is and um, let's build it out. Um, I know at the physical locations and on Zoom, I, I believe we're going to have um, somebody available. So if you guys have questions as you're building through this, um, we'll be able to walk around and kind of help you guys out as well. Anything else, Amy, Michelle? Yeah. You good? Another question, Raul? Yes. Uh, my question is if after you publish, uh, publish the smart plan, uh -huh. can you delete it or edit uh, to add more? Sure. The, the question was, once you publish a smart plan, um, can you delete it? 
And yeah, you can. You can leave it published there, or you can go and delete it if you no longer want it to be on the library. So, but but here's here's something to think about. And this is what we really haven't talked about as, as well. So we're gonna use Connor as an example. He created this buyer education smart plan, right? And now he's teaching and talking about this, or agents across the entire country are downloading his smart plan. So that can open up the opportunity for referrals. If somebody knows you as the agent that created an awesome smart plan and they know somebody moving to the Chicagoland area or Naperville, you could be the agent, right? That, that they may think of with that. So I know if I look up someone moving to Connor's area and I don't know anyone else, I'm gonna think of Connor, right? So that's another opportunity with putting it out onto the general marketplace is being able to get visibility out there for potential referrals. Okay, we're all set here. All right, we're gonna get going. So uh, I think we're gonna, we'll put some little music on uh, over here on our side and uh, yeah, just let us know if you guys need anything else. Yeah, and we'll be watching the Zoom chats too. So if those of you on Zoom, feel free to keep your screens open and unmute if you have questions and we'll, we'll watch for that as well. All right. What kind of music do you guys want to listen to? <laughs> oh, so you just grab it from the chat because it's just a Google form. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. I understand. I understand. I understand. I guess I.